My next guest in Gordon Street tonight is a singer-songwriter, a spoken word artist, a writer, an actor and a radio DJ. He's the hardest working man in a whole bunch of businesses. Please welcome Henry Rollins. <laughs> This may be the most inappropriate way to start this interview, but there's a lady over there that's making balloon gifts for every guest tonight. Uh, what, what animal are you going to personify me with? <laughs> Sausage dog. <laughs> I hear the dachshund is a very angry animal. <laughs> Cute but aggressive. Perfect. Well, there's, there's, there's no pressure. Have you ever made a balloon animal for a man this heavily tattooed before? No, I haven't. Why not the flower? Did you not think that was appropriate? OK. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, it gets gayer. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <I'll say. laughs> hey, welcome to Australia. From what I understand, this is the, the highest selling tour you've done in Australia. Oh, I have no idea. Uh, I, in that, I don't count tickets. But it, it is my 29th or 30th trip to Australia since 1989. Yeah. And uh, without being funny or in any way sarcastic, I really love your country very much. This is basically what you do. You travel around the world, going to unusual places and then coming back and reporting on them, basically. Yeah, pretty sure. much. I, I, in my country, a lot of people don't travel and a lot of people believe the hype, so they're afraid of this country and that country and that culture. Yeah. And I try and go to those places and just find out for myself. In that you can read a book, it's interesting about some country, or, uh, but when you go on your own, that's when you get the real information. And we had eight years of a president who doesn't need to be named, who told me to fear this country, that country hates your freedom and whatnot. So I said, well, okay, I got you. I'll go get my own info on that. Thanks. I'm still here. And that no one was mean to me. No one said, I hate your freedom. In fact, I had quite nice wel welcomings in places like Lebanon and Syria and Iran. And so I go to these places and come back and uh, report to my wonderful audience. So what happens when you go to these places? What happens, what, what's your general day like when you hit the ground? Usually if I pop up somewhere in Africa or somewhere in the Middle East, I just leave the hotel in the morning and I walk that way for a while. And if I see a slum or a souk or a bazaar or a railroad track or a river, I walk down it, walk into it, voulez-vous with the locals, play with the kids, uh, take a lot of photos, ask to walk in there and what does that do? And people are ridiculously friendly when you show genuine interest. And when someone speaks English, they'll say, what are you doing here? And my standard icebreaker is, I'm here to meet you, which makes them laugh. And uh, that's worked for me everywhere. Where have you felt most threatened? In one of those countries or in America? Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but um, America is the place where I've, I've had, I've nearly been killed twice in my life, like right. really nearly been dead and, you know, not worth discussing, but really awful. And that's been in America. So America is the roughest room I've ever been in. I, I was in Iraq once and I was in a mortar attack, but I was in a, a building that could take a mortar attack. I was there for USO, basically yeah. hanging out with the troops. But that was kind of uh, takes your breath away, the concussion of a mortar. It, 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 it's like a punch in the stomach. It's really something. How did, you know, I know, you, you know, you were in a band called Black Flag. Sure, don't many know. years ago, yeah. And ha I know that you discovering punk music would, like, virtually changed your life. Yeah. Well, I went to an all-boys naval prep school. You told to sit down and shut up a lot by uh, mm -hmm. Korean War vets, World War II vets, Vietnam vets, and you buy into it. You, you do a lot of sitting down and shut up. Yeah. Uh, the Ritalin cooled me out as well. Um, <laughs> and I would go to see Arena Rock. I saw Zeppelin and Nugent, because you could. For eight bucks underage, you could go in and see these bands from a mile away. And then I heard punk rock. I heard the Ramones. I saw The Clash when they did their first tour of America. Bo Diddley opened. And a couple of summers later, I'm standing in front of the Ramones getting sweated on by the bass player. You're that close to the music. It was a really tremendously powerful experience to me. But punk rock allowed me to question authority, to say you, you can say no to everything from your parents to the government to anything else. And Joe Strummer taught me that. My father never did. No, because a lot of... Now, I know a lot of the travelling that you do was kind of, in a weird way, inspired by your dad. Well, my dad never went anywhere. He was a PhD in economics. He's very, very smart, but he's also a champion racist and a, a fantastic homophobe. Did he win something? Yeah, yeah. He, he, <laughs> I, I think Budweiser, Marlboro, Smith & Wesson hands out an award every year. Wow. Uh, and, and just a, an amazing misogynist. And uh, he never went anywhere. And so my mother, art-loving jazz woman, would drag me around to different places for the art. We'd go to Greece and see the thing, go to France and see the museums, England see the museums. Yeah. And so by the time I was, like, you know, 14, I had a pass passport with some visas or some stamps in it. And I say, I see my father on the weekend. I say, Dad, I went to Istanbul, Turkey. Queer. As he chuck his empties in the back. 
Wow. Yeah, he was a bummer. But um, I never wanted to fear the world like he did. And so I go out into it, because I think people are pretty cool. Their governments might be a little crazy, mine included. Uh, but the people, like Americans, our government is fairly frightening at times with our military might. But you meet Americans, they're great. You yeah. go to New York, New Yorkers are fantastic. And Americans are a good, good bunch of people. Well, and that's the thing. Look, I've seen your shows a couple of times. Oh, uh, thanks. Yeah, and actually, at one point, I drove from Adelaide to Sydney listening to The Box Life. Wow, torture. I was, <laughs> yeah. I was angry by the time hood. I got out well, of yeah, the Well, yeah, the drive is tough, too. I, I've made that drive with a, bo with a truck full of gear. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Me, me and Brett Carrada of uh, Mass Appeal made that drive. Sydney to Adelaide in 89, and he handed me my first and last Vegemite sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and we're driving down the road battling flies in like this, you know, tough road, and he goes, you know, veggie, veggie sandwich? I'm thinking, veggie, great. You know, like, like cucumber and capsicum and all this great <laughs> stuff, and I eat this thing, like, like... <laughs> <laughs> and that was the last time that was ever, I ever ate that. And apparently, it's much sought after stuff. It's great, people dig it. I can't believe you're in Black Flag, but you draw the line at Vegemite. So. <laughs> well, I, I, I ate, last year I was eating rats uh, in southern India with the Arula tribesmen and so, for National Geographic. I do a bunch of work with them and uh, we were eating rats. We went out and caught them. They broke their little necks, threw them on the fire and you cook them up and you start with a rat liver and you eat the little meat off the haunches later. Yeah. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> I once heard you tell the most amazing story about, now, was Black, were you supporting, was it Alice Cooper? And nope. It was, uh, it was mm -hmm. a stadium gig, and it was thousands. It was the first time you guys had been on stage in front of that many people, and the sound of the audience. Just oh no, that was us opening for Ozzy. Ozzy, that's so who it was. we do it. We figure it's just gonna be folding chairs, hitting our heads, because who wants to see any band but Ozzy when you're at an Ozzy show? Yeah. And so after the song is over, first song, I'm now, like, was it sorry, wait. was it Sabbath or was it Ozzy? No, Osborne no, Ozzy solo. Okay. And uh, we hear, you know, the roar. And you're like, wow. Like, we're making it. They're not going to kill us. We do the next song. And now, you know, everyone in the band's like, you know, we are arena grade. And we do the whole show between songs. Like, I'd like to introduce our bass player. Because they're digging us. And we leave the stage with our heads this big, figuring Wembley is ours. And then Ozzy goes on stage. And you hear, and you realize, is 20,000 people going like, how long are these guys going to go on? <laughs> <laughs> Truly, it's like it's 20,000 people murmuring and checking their pager, you know? <laughs> and then when Ozzy goes on, the place literally trembles with the human activity. And you're like, oh. <laughs> so what's, what's the buzz you get now from being in front of a live audience doing spoken word? I love it. It's, uh, there's no room for error. There's no net. Yeah. I have no script. I don't have a shtick. I just go up there and tell it. And I do two and a half hours on stage with nothing on stage, no water, no nothing. And so it's mine to screw up. And so I have some water, Henry. No, I don't do it. Have some uh, water. I rehydrate and prehydrate and I've afterwards. Seen, I've There's seen no you... rule that says you can't have water. It's my rule. <laughs> What's wrong with you? A lot. <laughs> you have no idea. Come to the show, you'll hear all about You're it. You'll, a be, you'll be numb. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened? Okay, you've just been introduced to a new word, haven't you? Yes. Soft cock. A soft cock. Yeah. <laughs> I've been called a soft cock, Henry. Ah. I can't believe it's the first time. It means I love you. Is it, is it like, a, like a wimp, like a pussy? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, basically. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> well, Henry, the tour is going around Australia for the next few weeks, yeah, the next couple of months. Yeah, very long one. And as I said, it's the most successful Australian tour. It's just this thing. If you've built up this thing of coming back and coming back and people yeah. are, are well, loving it. I, I like you all. And so the first time we ever, I ever came here was with a band. Yeah. No records out. Yeah, yeah. When you first came out, you were staying at Bondi. Like... Yeah, yeah. All of us in bunk beds. <laughs> yeah, it was all we could afford. And so we all stayed in one big room by the beach and ate buckets of rice at this Chinese place every day and did our shows in town yeah. in a sea of VB cans <laughs> and wow. had an amazing time. Met all kinds of great Australian bands who are my friends to this day, like Mark of Cain, The Hard Ons, Mass Appeal, Kim Salmon, Be Suburban, <laughs> yeah, yeah. on and on and on. And uh, yeah, Australia keeps putting out like insanely good music every year. The Hard Ons. So, yeah. <laughs> see Phil seen... Soft Cox and that no. band pal. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to, after what we've been talking about, throw to Bindi Owen. But, uh... <laughs> I wonder if, if, her, if she, her head's exploding backstage. <laughs> I'm not sure. or, or the mother's like... 
<laughs> Mom, what's a soft? No, 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 no. <laughs> Still to come, we've got Kate Miller Heidke, Vindy and Terry Owen, and Reese Harvey phones it in. Please thank Henry Rollins. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.